Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. I haven't done any subscriber tips and tricks for a while, and many of you have been sending me some great ideas, so I need to catch up on some of those. Let's start off over at the drill press. Some time ago, I made this vertical drilling jig for the drill press, and it uses these magnetic switches. And the point of it is, if you're drilling into the end grain of wood or through a vertical piece of wood, you could clamp this on here, set this up, move it around, and lock it down. And you would just clamp it. But Jacob came up with a few ideas. First of all, I know not everybody has these clamps here, and he's suggesting that you could clamp it. And I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not, but yeah, you could actually clamp this. There's a variety of ways you could clamp this down. You don't need to use magnetic switches. The other thing he suggested, depending on the kind of drill press that you have, you may not be able to move it back and forth. And what his suggestion was, you could use a hole saw or a bandsaw, and depending on where it is, you might be able to cut a slot, uh, and you might be able to do that on either side. So you just sort of cut that part out, and the purpose of that is that will then slide over where your post is so that you'll actually be able to get close. But it's going to depend on the drill press that you have. So I thought that was a good idea. If you're drilling into doweling, doweling is hard to clamp on this, and he suggested making, I'll do, give you a close-up of it, this little piece of wood, and you can see that it's kind of angular, and it's just a V-cut. V you can cut that on your table saw very easily. Now, Jacob suggests gluing it on there, and the point of that is if you're doing doweling, it's hard to put a dowel on there, and the best way to do that, of course, is to clamp it like this because it's it's V'd right in there. Let me give you a close-up so you can see just how well that works on that. And the point of that then of course is that you could it's much easier to clamp that. But that was a great idea. I really liked all of those Jacob so thanks very much. The next tip is from Mike and he suggests if you're like me and you're drilling at the drill press Often I have two or three drill bits that I'm using and I take one out, put another one back in. Um, and sometimes I misplace where they are, which ones they were, if I end up putting them back in here. And Mike's suggestion is to put some um, earth magnets, some of these powerful earth magnets, put them on your drill press somewhere and use them as a temporary holding place for your drill bits. And that way you won't get confused with what they are. They're quick and easy. You know what? They're not going to fall off of there. Um, these things are strong enough. Even, that's a half inch. That's a big heavy half inch drill bit. And even it doesn't fall off of there. You'd have to really bang it to get it off there because you have to pull these to get them off. So uh, that's a great idea for storing some temporary bits while you're using them. Thanks, Mike. This door or drawer pull is from Roland. And I put it on there with temporary tape so that I can take it off so I can show you what it looks like. And that's all it is. And it's such a neat little design. I thought I'd show you how to make it. So have a look at this. So what you do is start off with a square piece of wood. In my case, it was 5 eighths of an inch thick, and the width doesn't really matter, and of course the length doesn't matter. And you take that to your router table, round that over, take it then to your table saw and cut off at a 45 degree angle, and cut them off in your miter saw. And presto, you've got some little door pulls. So let's go over to the router table, and let me show you how to start that. I just set up a quarter round bit that's going to give me a near perfect round over for the wood that I'm using. And those are great little drawer pulls. Thanks, Roland. This next tip is from David, uh, and David's suggesting for those of us like me who are storing their little pieces of wood, I've got a shelving unit, I'm going to show you a picture of it. So this is what my cutoff storage looks like. And you can see that I've got a bit of a problem because I don't know how long the wood is, but he's suggesting why not write how long it is as you're cutting it, measure it, put it on the shelf, 
In this case, mine's two foot four. So that's the code I'm going to use, two dash four. And now I'll know how long those pieces of wood are that I need. Thanks, David, that's a great tip. Here's a tip that I can really use from John. Uh, John suggests in your workshop, have one single band-aid and have it easily accessible. He suggests putting it on a clip and look at where, and I've already done it. I've already put mine there. It's on a clip right there. It's out of the way. I know where it is. And from time to time when I cut myself, usually I cut myself on wood. I'm always touching wood and checking the joints and how sharp it is. And sometimes I get finger cuts or slivers. And for some reason, I get cuts on the top of my hand. And what a great way of knowing where a Band-Aid is that you can go to it quickly. Because I hate, I hate getting blood on wood. So that's a great tip, John. Thanks. I've already done that. Well, that concludes my video for today. Thanks to everybody who's been sending in tips and ideas. Uh, and if you've got an idea, I'd love to hear about it. Send it in to me. If I haven't already used it, uh, I'll try and implement it into an upcoming video. Uh, and then we can all learn from it. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.